how you uh, model the rivets or the connections between the various components. So what I've done here, actually, to make it a little bit simpler to, to show what's going on, is I've, I've started with a, a different model. This is a much simpler model. It's just two sheets. There are two panels. It's very similar to the connection you would have in the wing model, but you know I've just simplified it to make it a little easier to see what's going on. Uh, so the two plates are fully built in or fixed at one edge, and the upper plate is has a bending force at one of the corners. Now, as it stands now, there's no connections here, and if we were to run this, like if we were to go to analysis, op destruct, and run it did it right, you'll just basically get the uh, top plate bending and nothing happening with the bottom plate. So let's see, here we go. This should run very quick. Okay, it's done. And if we look at the results in Hyperview, you'll see it should be just that. If they load up. So what we're going to need to do in this one is actually assume that those plates are going to be connected by rivets. So we'll actually want to use C bar elements at a one inch spacing to connect these together, okay? okay well, here's the one that doesn't work, so you can, well, works, it doesn't have the connections, and so you can see, look at the stresses, only the top plate sees stresses, and the bottom plate doesn't see any, right? I think it's deformed. So, well, that's a bit much, but you can get the idea. The top plate bends, the bottom plate doesn't do anything. But they're really supposed to be connected to increase the stiffness, okay? So let's add in those connections. All right. So like I said, what I would want to do is actually make uh, C-bar elements that connect these. So the first thing I did was I, I added uh, a, I defined a property card for the bar elements. It's a, it's a P-bar L card. Uh, so basically the same as a p-bar card except that instead of explicitly typing in all the properties you can choose a cross-section in this case I choose uh, rod because it's a solid rod and then the dimension is just the radius okay so there it is so that's that's going to be the properties for the rivets it's got a material assigned to it and so on and so forth okay so normally to make a, a rivet you would just go under 1d and select bars. Oh, they don't have bars. Bar two. Bar where are they? Rods. Yeah, bars. Usually they're bars. Yeah, here it is. Bars. Okay. So bar two element, right? And you pick the two nodes. Let's say for the heck of it. I would go from here to here. Okay. There's that C bar element. Uh, I'd give it the property. I would also have to give it the orientation vector. So in this case, the orientation vector, I gave it just an X component. So that means that, uh, you know, that, that's the orientation plane. So that would be one way to make a C bar element. But I would have to do that every inch. And that's not so bad for this model. But for your wing model, that will be very, very painful. Okay, so let's reject that. Let's show another way to do that, all right? So hypermesh, you know, there's lots of components that are built with rivets or spot welds or even bonded lines, and you have to make hundreds, thousands of these types of connections. So hypermesh has this uh, connections capability that allows you to find different type of connectors. We're going to use a spot weld, which is basically just going to use one element to connect it. That's that's probably reasonable for a rivet. You can also do like a bolt and it'll create a C-bar, and then if you have a hole, it'll beam the hole with RBE three elements, okay? So we're not gonna do that. We don't have the holes explicitly meshed, but we have the rivets. So you can see here there's spot, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. All right. The way this basically works is I'm gonna draw a line, and then I'm gonna define a spacing on that line. Hypermesh will then create basically its own special thing called a connector. It's just basically like a point. And then it'll try to create elements that connect the two components, okay? It'll do it all automatically. So the first thing I want to do, okay, so I have the property card. Okay, so that's good. Let's let's make a new layer. Let's make a new component. 
where I'm going to keep the rivets. So I'm going to create a new component. I'll just call it rivet rivet line. I guess that's what I used before. I'll make it red. It doesn't really have any properties. Okay, the properties are going to be signed on the element level. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a line. That's basically the rivet line. So let's go into geometry, the first radio button, create line, and I'm going to create a line between this node and this node and create. Okay, so I'm going to define rivets along this line. Okay. All right. Now to define the rivets, we go to 1D because these are 1D elements connectors and again we're going to use spot so it's like like a spot weld but in fact it's you know it doesn't matter the way you're going to model a spot weld versus a rivet is basically the same it's just going to be a c bar element connecting these guys together okay but before we go any further let me mention one other thing really quick before we go and do that something about defining 1d elements in hypermesh so HyperMesh, as I said before, supports a lot of different programs. So it has lots of ways of, you know, there's lots of flexibility in that. But on, sometimes it makes it a bit confusing. So when you set bars, when you go to draw a bar, your default element type here might not be C bar. If you look at it, it might be something like, let's say I do bars. And if you look down here at element types and you see something like maybe C beam or C weld, well, we can fix that. The easiest way to do that is, again, under 1D, there's element types. And that basically maps these names here to the particular cards in NASTRAN. So if we go to element type, you can see, for example, when they say bars, here it's making a C bar element. If you were to change that to C beam, then when you were to make bars from that same pull down menu, it would actually not create C bar elements, but C beam elements, okay? So if you see C beam elements, what you want to do is go into that um, edit element type panel and change bars to C bar, okay? All right, let's do that. Okay, so now I already did that, so that's the way it is. Um, let's go back to connectors. We're going to do spots. Okay, now this basically allows us to just do it right on the spot. It'll create everything as you do it. It's probably the easiest thing to do. There's other ways you can create them and then realize them later, but this is the easiest for what you've done. If you've already meshed the model completely, this is the way to go. So first, we're going to define the location by line. That's going to be this line here. Then a spacing. So we can set the spacing to three. Well, let's let's set it to one inch. Okay, one inch. Okay, no, not, not point one. But one inch. So this is going to be, each rivet along this line is going to be spaced by one inch. All right. Now, connect what? So we need to say what elements are, the, are these connectors going to connect. The easiest way to do it is by components. And it's going to connect elements in the blue plane to the ones in the purple plane. Okay. And it'll try to connect them as closely as possible. All right. It's going to use uh, bar elements. So this is the bar 2 element as defined in the panel, so that, that's going to do a C bar element. Like I said again, if you see C beam elements, that means that you need to change that, okay? And then you can also pick the property card, so it's going to be ribbon, okay? That's what we want to use. Um, you can put the diameter, but it really doesn't matter, okay? I mean, because the diameter is really defined in the ribbon card. Okay, so we got the line picked. Did I, oh, I didn't pick the line. Let's pick the line. Oh, the line's picked. Okay, so now we do create. And there you go. You can see what it's done now is it's put a C bar element uh, exactly where it goes. Okay, so now we've generated those C bar elements, and uh, they're on that collector, but they connect a node in here to a node in here. So it did it automatically, right? Sometimes if the nodes don't exactly line up, it'll kind of put the C bar element at a little bit of an angle, or you can even set it. A parameter where it'll span them with an RBE3 element. Okay, so maybe the the C bar element connects down into the middle of this shell, but it'll connect to the ne nearest nodes with rigid elements. Okay, and that'll all be done automatically. So it'll still be a little time consuming, but once you do it a couple times, you'll find it's not too hard. Okay, so that's the way you generate um, the connectors. 
I'm going to pause here and then we'll kind of pick up a second part of this video where I actually run it and just show you maybe a couple of things that might go wrong, okay?